we can continue talking about moment of forces. Now, when you have a moment that is produced by a coupled force, coupled force meaning that you have a pair of forces or a set of forces that contribute to the same moment direction, you can write it down as um, the moment produced by the forces cross or curl the distance from um, the forces to the origin where, or the axis that you want to find the moment with respect to. So, of course, at this point, we only have forces in space, but if we do, if you want to do any computations, you have to set them up in a system of, of coordinate system. And, of course, you have uh, X, Y, and Z, because in statics for this class, usually you'll just use the uh, Cartesian coordinate system, which is this X, Y, and Z. We know that by now. And then the forces are going to have a distance. So that distance um, needs to be computed. And that um, also, also you have to remember that the origin of each vector needs to be um, the distance from the origin of the vector or the tail of the vector with respect to the origin needs to be found. Okay, so that's how you start doing your computations. We, once you have the distance, you can find the unit vector and then basically the set of forces will uh, create a moment. So you have um, positive force and a negative force, um, but they will contribute to the moment. Okay, so if you notice in this case, the moment will be counterclockwise, so it will be a positive moment. And once you have this positive moment by a couple of force, that moment will have a force or a moment basically will have a newton meter, more like a torque. Uh, in in this case, in the vertical direction, and this is actually how a helicopter works. You have forces rotating in, uh, in the same direction, and then there's a moment produced that's going to lift a pretty heavy mass. Okay, so if you know the forces, you know how much torque you can get, and from there you know how much mass you can lift. So, as we just mentioned, we have to find the distances from the forces. That is a pretty uh, straightforward concept. Um, also, if the forces are applied in different planes, so for instance, let's say we have plane one, which is right here. This is our first plane. And then we also have uh, plane two, which we have another force going through, which is F2. The resultant of M1 will be the distance of that force. So notice that R is the distance between point A and point B with respect uh, curl, curl or cross F1. In other words, we have F1, curl the distance, and that will give us a moment 1. And the same for moment 2. We just find the same distance and compute it with respect to F2, and that will give us the force in the moment in plane 2. So the total moment is going to be the distance cross the summation of F1 and F2. <clears throat> and basically, Bering Young's theorem is that each computation is basically the moments can be linearly com uh, combined. And that is because we're still in a linear algebra field. And moments can also have components. And that's why we've been talking about moment in X and moment in Y. Right, because if you have x, y, and z, you can have moments with respect to those axes.
So if this is the y-axis and you have your forces going like this, then the moment will make will push that up, kind of like a helicopter again. So yeah, go ahead and study the concepts of how moments can be applied to the axis. Um, just basically a force times a distance in three dimensions is the distance is a vector. The force is a um, vector of com with components as well. And then you do the curl of the force and the distance. So the other thing that we have to remember is that if you have an origin, whichever origin that might be, x, y, and z, and you have a force somewhere in the space, that force, that this system of a force pulling something in space can be conceptualized as a force and a moment. The moment at the origin, and this is basically the moment produced by the force and the distance, and it's applied at the origin. And the same force that is moved to the origin, and we'll see that in a minute. And obviously, if you have more than one point of interest, you can move that around just by finding the distance of the point of interest. So in this case, the moment at O is equals R cross F. The moment at O prime equals R prime cross F. So this is something that we know by now. And of course, this system will be like so. And this system is just like that where the moments are at O prime. Interestingly, if you notice, M, the moment at O prime is equal to the distance between O and O prime, which is this, this is a vector, the vector S cross the force at O prime And that is added to the original moment at O. So either you find R prime, or if they're giving you the moment at O, just add it up to this um, computation, which is the distance between O and O prime. This is, if you want, this is R, this is R S, or they call it S right here. But this is a distance cross F plus the original moment. So sometimes that could be useful. So let's look at this example. Okay, so we have, they're asking us to compute the, determine the components of the single equivalency, or determine the components of, what do we have to do? We have to find the moments around x, y, and y, and z, correct? Yes. So let's try and do this. So we, they're asking us for the moments at x, at y, and at z. So with respect to x, they're asking us for a moment that is going to make it rotate like this or like that. We have to find out. Counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. So what force is going to make it rotate around this axis well is this force if you push this force enough you can make this go around this axis right in concept and this will cause the same scenario so it will make it rotate in a negative in a clockwise um, fashion right if your clock is right here it's going to go clockwise all right so how do we do that? The four, the distance that is going to make this rotate, the magnitude is this distance, is nine because it's perpendicular, right? This is the perpendicular distance. This is the perpendicular distance. So this is 30 pounds times nine inches. And if they're asking you in inches, in, if they're asking you pound inch is okay. If the answer is pound feet, then you have to remember that one feet is 12 inches and then convert all this to inches, two feet, I mean, 
but I think it's okay to keep it in inches. They're not telling us to move it to pound feet. Um, so this is just one, but there's two. And this one is doing the same thing, plus 30 pounds times 9 inches. And that is equal to 30 times 9 times 2. is 540 pound inch let's do let's write this better is equal to 540 pound force times inch okay this is equal to now y y is going to make it rotate counterclockwise or clockwise what force so that's going to be this force and that force so this force is going to make it rotate clockwise so it's negative and this force is going to make it rotate counterclockwise so it's positive so start with this one 20 pounds times 12 inches plus 7 inches is 19 inches minus because this one is going to make it rotate counterclockwise and it's a different distance so this is a couple moment this is not because directions of the moment are different and the magnitudes are different because the distances are different so this is negative 20 you notice it's the same force but it's not a couple moment the distances are that the effect on the system is different than a couple moment the couple moment is basically a moment produced by a force, um, by a system of forces that are combined to increase the moment. In this case, we have 20 times 19 minus 20 times 7, which is not a couple moment. All right, so that is. pound times inch if you use your calculator you'll find that out all right now z which one z this one will, what force will make it rotate counterclockwise or clockwise sorry clockwise is this negative counterclockwise is this positive and the only forces doing that could be 20 and this one is not going to make it rotate because it's right it's applied right on the axis so since this, there's no distance, this is not going to make it rotate. They're, they're, therefore, the only one that makes a moment around Z happen is this one. And it's going to make it rotate in a positive direction. And it's also going to be 9 inches. So this one is positive 20 pounds, 20 pound force times 9 inches. So we've got 20 times 9 is 180 pound inch. All right, so we got 540 to 40. Which one is negative here? We have this one is negative. Right, because it's rotating clockwise. Negative 40, positive. right positive and in y yeah negative positive positive 540 to 40 180 and we have negative 540 to 40 180 perfect so this moment is a vector remember and the magnitude or the components are negative 40 pound inch in i 240 in j and 180 in k all right so of course if they ask you for the magnitude of the moment then you do square root of mx squared plus my squared plus z squared okay and the way you conceptualize that is like so the components of the moment is right here it's hard to see but you have a positive moment no actually you have a negative moment 
so this is x y and z you have a negative moment in x you have a positive moment in y you have a positive moment in z just get rid of this so that you can see better yeah so notice this moment is negative right here negative 540 and the way you express a moment is um, at the arrow and the direction of the moment and y is positive so it's the arrow and positive counterclockwise and in z is positive and counterclockwise arrow okay so that's how you express the moments if they ask you to draw the moments but really this is this is all you need to do um okay so yes we can have many couple moments and this is just summation of all the moments and go ahead and study all these concepts of uh, forces on planes generating moments it's just force times distance if you have questions please let me know uh, but we have an interesting problem here so we have this beam right here which is fixed at this point and is has a ruler in this point that means that you can move in x and y where you can't move in you can move in x positive and x negative but you can move in y and you have fixed displacement in y in x you're in this case you're fixed in x and y so you need at least one of these one of these types of forces of, of um, conditions to have a system that is has a unique solution. If you have a roller here and a roller here, you have many solutions. But this one will make the system have a unique solution because this eventually will make the forces equal to zero at this point. Okay, so they're asking us to compute a force couple system at A and at B. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So first of all, the first thing we need to do is this a two-dimensional problem. So if you try to draw this, it's going to have x and y. And they're telling us that you can start x here, the origin at, at a. And they're going to have 1.6 meters, 2.8 meters in i, so an x. Meters, don't get confused with the i, this is just the direction. It's not imaginary, it's just 1.6 meters, 2.8 meters, 4.8 meters. And notice that at here, here we have zero meters. So this force is gonna create a moment, but this is gonna create a negative moment because it's clockwise. It's gonna create a positive moment because it's kind of clockwise. It's gonna create a negative moment because it's kind of clockwise. So, how do we do that? So first, the summation of forces. Summation of forces, remember that for statics has to be equal to zero. So we have um, no forces in X, and then summation of forces in Y equal to zero. What, it, what do we have there? We have that um, positive 150, a negative 600, positive 100 which is up here and negative 250 why because this is positive this is aiming down so this is negative this is aiming up so this is positive and this is aiming down so this is negative okay so the resultant is equal to this emission 600 plus 100 is 700 minus 250 is 450 plus 150 is 600 so r equals 600 in y the resultant force is negative negative 600 newtons 
you can see how it's basically um, 100 and 150 and 100 are 250 and then we have a negative 200 which is going in the opposite direction so really the only one staying um, is the negative 600 okay so that makes a lot of sense it's negative 600 so we have a force going downwards um, about 600 newtons okay so that's part a compute the res the, the resultant and then oh I got on top of the moment computation which let me get rid of this okay then the moment is pretty easy so what we have to do is each force um, times the distance so 150 let's do it the right way so moment summation of moments is going to be equal to 150 times zero which is this guy then 600 is negative so negative 600 times the distance which is 1.6 this is newtons this is meters plus 100 newton meters times the distance which is 2.8 meters so is this one going up then minus 250 newtons times 4.8 meters okay this is the same thing that they computed except for they keep putting i so don't get confused this is the i direction there's no y and z there's everything is just a vertical direction this moment is equal to negative 100 sorry 1880 newton meter and interestingly this is in the k direction so this is trying to pull it towards us towards the front of the screen okay so even though the moments were in j the result the, even though the forces were in j, applied on j the resultants applied in is resultants is in k okay so if these forces are too big this system will collapse first moving towards um, th this direction towards k okay so it's pretty simple please review this example and ask me questions and let me know if you have any um, concerns all right and find the pulling force okay this is where it's pretty interesting so now what we have to do is find a distance um, where we have we have to find a system where we have the single force applied at a uh, distance so they're asking us to find the cooling pores based on the system at A. Okay, so if you were to draw the system, you would place the force at A, negative 600. This is the resultant force, this is R, with a negative moment clockwise of nine, negative 1,880 meters. Okay, so they're wanting us to find an equivalent force system at B. And B is 4.8 uh, newton meters. So what needs to happen is, remember, we have to do the moment at B is the moment at A plus the force transferred to B times the distance. So it's pretty simple. Just do 4.8 times 600, which is 2880. Uh, 2880 newton meters plus the original moment except for the original moment is negative so the moment at b is a thousand newton meters okay so notice that here this moment is negative 1880 versus here at b is positive 1000 how could that be well, because it's based on the resultant force, 600. And the resultant force is a combination of all these forces. 
okay? And the resultant force is over here, but all these forces were causing other things in the system. So this force is way closer to A than to B. So the moment at B is going to be, by the resultant force, it's going to be smaller. So that is making sense. Okay, <clears throat> there's another question. The force resultant R, um, this point is equal to the moments. Okay, so just they're asking what is the what is the that distance x from a force to generate the same um, moment. So instead of having all of those forces, what if we can simplify it to a single force, the resultant? What would be that distance to generate the same moment at A? So it's pretty simple. So the moment at A, which is negative, is equal to a force, which is negative, times a distance. Okay, so that is basically um, 1880 divided by the force is equal, we should be getting 3.13 meters. So 1880 divided by 600, <coughs> yeah, 3.13. So that means that this system at A with a force of negative 600 or just a force of 600 newtons going down and that force applied at a distance of 3.3 meters is causing the same effect than all these forces distributed at these distances. Okay, so that is an interesting concept too. You can have the same moment by different configurations, different forces or a single force at a, at a given distance. <clears throat>